in the last video we we talked a little bit about or at least potentially starting a cupcake factory but this is a major investment that I'm I'm thinking about making so at, at minimum I made a spreadsheet here in Excel and it's available at at khanacademy.org slash downloads slash cupcakes dot xls and if you just click slash here you'll see everything in the download directory but I'm gonna start putting more stuff there so I encourage you to play with it but this is essentially it'll do all the math for us that we did in the last video so you know the investment in the factory and let's say you know in the real world once I actually got bids from contractors and things like that it ends up costing 1.1 million dollars the annual capacity is a million cupcakes per year the cost per cupcake let's say i don't know input cost went up for whatever reason i you know now that i have a, a computer doing the math for me i can deal with a little bit funnier numbers so let's say it's, say it's a dollar 5 the price charged per cupcake is 2 dollars or well, actually it, it can be anything right and so this is going to be an input field and right now it says 2 dollars and this is let's say this is what we assume is how many cupcakes we sell and in this scenario this is the income statement at least as far as we get to the operating income line and so you know it calculates that you have 2 million of revenue and notice what happens when i change it if i sell my cupcakes for $1.50 per cupcake then i only have 1.5 million so it actually computes what we need it to compute it computes the cost of goods sold if i change the number of cupcakes let's see if instead of a million if i sell 500 thousand it calculates everything accordingly and in all of these scenarios it tells me my operating income and if you go a little bit lower it tells me well capacity utilization that's just how many cupcakes I sold divided by how many I could make so that's 50 percent utilization and then my return on asset is my operating income divided by my initial investment right so this is 275 thousand divided by 1.1 it was a minus 25 so this is actually a bad outcome so in the last one I, I touched on a little bit that you know the real lever the real lever that uh, I as a as the owner of my cupcake factory can change is price and then obviously if I charge a lower price more people are going to want to buy my cupcakes and if I charge a higher price uh, fewer people although you know there are some things that when you charge a higher price people think it must be better so maybe they want it or they you know they want to show off to their friends and you know look at this expensive cupcake that I eat and it's kind of a status symbol but you know for the most part the lower you the price the more you sell and now we can actually figure out under what combinations am I going to make certain amounts of money so if I charge a dollar fifty per cupcake and I'm only able to sell five hundred thousand cupcakes I'm going to take a loss per year of two hundred seventy five thousand if I sell them for a dollar seventy five and if I sell I don't know seven hundred thousand cupcakes I'm almost at break even I lose so let's say I have to do a dollar eighty five here in this situation I actually make money I have a five percent return on asset and just so you know, I'm, this is a major investment that I'm making, $1.1 million. I actually want to make sure I understand all of the scenarios of price and sales. So what I did is actually used Excel to do a sensitivity study. So what I did here is I put all of the, let me just go to that part of the spreadsheet. And I encourage you to play with this because it's interesting. And it shows you that even a fairly simple business, you can do uh, a lot of analysis. And if you're, a, if you're in high school or in middle school, this could actually be a fun, I don't know if they allow this type of thing for science projects, but go to a local business and kind of analyze the business in a hundred different ways. And actually, if you watch the probability videos, I do all those things on Poisson processes and things like that. And you can analyze a business and do Excel spreadsheets, and you'll probably end up winning the, the state science fair. You could call it a math project or engineering project. But anyway, here I wanted to figure out what is my return on asset. So essentially, you know, the, 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 my operating profit divided by my initial investment depending on the different prices I might charge and the, the different quantities. And here it's kind of hard to visualize, so I graphed it as a three-dimensional surface, 3D. All right, so you see here, if I charge $2.80 and I only sell 300000 then this is my return on asset right here. And, I'll, I'll, and this curve is actually the zero curve, right? So this is actually my break-even right here. So any point along this break, on the, along this curve right here, I'm break even. So if I'm at two dollars eighty per cupcake and I only sell three hundred thousand, I'm break even. Or if I'm, let's see, what is this right here? If I sell a dollar sixty per cupcake, but I sell on if I sell like nine hundred thousand, then I'm also break even. So this is this is my break even curve. This is what I want to avoid. 
everything here is in the negative, right? This is this, according to the legend, minus 50% to 0% return. So here I'm losing money, and I would color it in if I wasn't in Excel mode. But if I only if I charge a dollar sixty per cupcake, and I only sell 400,000 cupcakes, I'm going to have a negative return, and we can actually figure it out in that little worksheet I just did. But anyway, this is fun to look at, and I encourage you to play with it. And actually shows you that it's you know it's a fairly you know interesting and sophisticated thing that you have these two variables that change and even though this is kind of about as simple as a business can get, and then you can only imagine what happens when you start varying the other parameters. But these are the two big ones. So let's say you know when I come out the gate, I I want everyone in town to t to taste my cupcakes because I think once they uh, once they, they taste it, they'll realize that, that they're delicious. And by the way, I've, I've also learned from, from the cigarette companies, and I've put nicotine in my cupcake, so I think people will become addicted to it. So what I do is I want to charge a relatively low price for it. So let's say I do come out the gate at, oh, I don't know, $1.75. And that's a very cheap price for cupcakes, and there's actually no cupcake uh, producers in this town right now. So I just sell out. One, two, three. I just sell out of cupcakes. And so I'm making two hundred thousand dollars per year, and that's an eighteen percent return on asset. And you know, a lot of people would be happy with that, but I'm like, hey, you know, I'm I'm leaving money on the table because I'm selling out of my cupcakes. So what happens if I raise my price a little bit? I should just, you know, I should just I I'm I'm fully utilized, right? I have hundred percent utilization. So it, it it makes sense for me to see if there's any, uh, you know, maybe there there's some people who want cupcakes who can't get them because I can't produce that many. So let me raise my price a little bit. Let me say. I raise it to a dollar eighty five and at a dollar eighty five it still turns out that I'm selling a million cupcakes in a year now I was right i I was leaving money on the table now I'm making three hundred thousand a year so i you know this seems like a good idea. I want to see kind of how much people are willing to pay so let's say I raise the price to two dollars, but in that scenario, two dollars it starts to get a little pricey for people it's just kind of a little sticker shock maybe I should have done a dollar ninety nine and so I don't sell a, a million I sell nine hundred fifty thousand. So it's only kind of that, you know, there was maybe 50,000 people on the margin who'd said, hey, you know, I'd buy at $1.85, but I'm not willing to buy it at $2. But this still works out, right? I'm still making more money even though I'm selling fewer cupcakes because I'm charging so much more per cupcake. And I'm making a 30%, 37% return. And let's say, you know, I keep figuring this out, and let's say I figure out the optimal point is me charging $3 per cupcake, and at $3 per cupcake, I'm able to sell. 750,000 cupcakes and I make 962,000 a year and I have a huge return on asset 88%. Imagine a, a business, you know, or some investment where you get 88% of your money every year. So, that's all in good and I'm, you know, I'm driving a Bentley and um, you know, and I'm I have the biggest house on a hill in town and all of that. But other people say, "Hey, all Sal's doing is making cupcakes." I can make cupcakes too, and I have some money to to build a factory. And you know, this this is a better return on investment than the stock market or anything else that I know of. So I'm also going to get into into the into the the cupcake factory business. And so here, and this is the second worksheet in this spreadsheet. The second worksheet right here. So let's say what was my I would, I was at one, two, three. I don't know if you could see this. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit. Let me see if I can. There you go. So the same thing. So I said three dollars, and what did I say? Seven hundred fifty thousand cupcakes, and my cost was a dollar or five. So I was making nine hundred sixty-two thousand. But then Imran, and just so you're curious, why I wasn't recording videos for the last two weeks? Actually, Imran is the name of my son, and 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 he came in to the world two weeks ago, and so I I think. Um, it, it makes sense to name a cupcake store after him. But let's say he comes in and he's like, well, you know, I don't, I'm tired of getting an allowance from dad. I also want to produce cupcakes. And, and he actually has more money because his grandma uh, gave him, I don't know, more money because she likes him more than, than maybe her son. And so he has a million five to invest because he's like, wow, this is such a good investment. Let me put more money into it, 1.5 million. And he builds a factory that can produce 2 million cupcakes a year. And he's like, you know what? And also, it's a more efficient factory, so it actually uses a little, a little, a little less electricity, and it wastes less cream and 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 frosting and and I guess nicotine as well. So it, the cost per cupcake, the cost per cupcake is less. And he decides to undercut his his father, and so he charges two dollars ninety per cupcake. 
And when he charges two dollars an hour, well, you know, everyone just kind of runs to him because his cupcakes are just as good. There really wasn't much of a barrier. So let's say he sells he sells five hundred thousand cupcakes, and then I'm only selling two hundred fifty thousand at three dollars. There's just some people who who like my cupcakes. So I'm I'm pretty much almost break even. And you know, I say, well, you know, these are my my diehard fans and so to benefit them, these guys aren't going to go anywhere else. I'm going to raise my prices a little bit just cuz I know that these guys like me. And at least in that situation I'm cutting a profit. But then I say, well, you know what? This isn't a good state of affairs. He took all my business. And I actually want you to to notice something right here. What happened immediately? I was making an 88% return on my money, right? And just when this Imran comes in and he enters into the space, all of a sudden, what what is the what is the return? He's he's only running at 25% utilization, but his return on asset has gone down to 20%. And, and because he's at that low utilization, his return on asset's gone down to 20%. And then my return on asset's gone down to 1%. So there's a general theme here is when you know someone is doing really well and getting a really great return, it attracts competition. It attracts capacity, right? And if there's enough demand to satiate that new capacity, maybe they will get a better return. But in general, over time, if there's a very favorable return, more and more competition will enter the market. And actually, I've run out of time in this video. In the next video, I'll talk about more scenarios with competition. See you soon.